In this video, I'm going to be covering the if function. I'm going to go over a short slideshow about the basics. And then the example that I cover here in the basics section, I'm going to go ahead and do that in Excel just so I can make sure I cover it thoroughly. So the if function is a very powerful and popular tool in Excel. What you do with the if function is you test a condition. If that condition is true, you can have a specified text or value print in a cell. And if it's not true, you can have an alternative text or value print in a cell. To some people, it's really advanced. People don't want to learn it, but it's really relatively easy to learn. So the syntax of the if function. When you want it to appear in a cell, you type equals if, and then you have three arguments logical test, value if true, and the value of false, all separated by commas. So here I want the if function to appear in the third column. Looking at the syntax a little closer, the first argument, the logical test. This is a required argument. It's the condition to test. Now in the example, I need to use the first two columns to make the test. So F9 minus E9 divided by E9. F, or actually yeah, F9 is the price change, the 24.66 minus E9, the base price, divided by E9. That gives us the price difference after the price change. It's either going to be an increase or a decrease. So notice the greater than sign after that equation. And if it's greater than 0 0.05, which is the same as 5%, I want some text to appear. Or if it's not, I'm going to have some alternative text appear. So the value of true, that's the first text to appear. That's also required value to return if the test is true. So as you can see, there's three values. These are three situations where that value is true. So after the condition, I have a comma. So the function is ready to accept the value to print if it's true. Next, you have the value of false. This is actually optional. This is the value to return if the test is false. So if the condition is not true, meaning if the price change was less than, well, if the price change was equal to 5% or less, I didn't want it to print. I wanted to have a dash show up. If I really wanted to just have nothing in these cells, I could have just put the quotes together. Or if I wanted the text string to appear, I would have typed whatever text I wanted in between the quotes. And notice that the false condition, I had to put a comma after the true condition before I could start the false condition. So now I want to take a look at this example in Excel just so I can cover it thoroughly. Alright, so I made it over to my Excel example. Here's our column three. I'm going to type if, open parentheses. OK, so my logical test will be the price change minus the base divided by the base to give us our percentage change. I can't forget my parentheses around this part of the formula. So I'm going to put my test in. So if that percentage change is greater than 0 0.05, I'm going to put a comma. Now it's asking for the value of true. Then I actually want this value that I'm testing to show up. And when it's false, I don't want anything to show up. So I'm just going to put two double quotes. Remember, you could put some text in between here or a dash like I did earlier. Closing parentheses. 
there's my formula. I can use the, since all these references will move down, I can use the fill handle and just double click on that to get all my other formulas to drop down. So one thing I didn't explain earlier was the fact that this last argument is not required. But if we don't use it, and it turns out that the condition is false for these values, then a false will show up if the condition is not met. So this might be helpful if you need the false to appear within an equation, or you may even be able to use the false in a comma. Just depends on how you how you want your your function set up or how dynamic you want your function. I'm going to go ahead and change that back. Another thing is we could make this a little more dynamic. So we could make it so the percentage changes. So let me make this a variable. Let me make this dependent on G6. I'll drag this down. Oh, and one thing. I actually can't drag those down. I almost forgot. So, if we're going to be dependent on G6 for the percentage, then I actually have to change this to a fixed reference. I can do that by pressing Command T for a, on a Mac machine, or if you're on a Windows machine, you can press F4. It'll do the same thing. So I really don't need it for the column, but I need the dollar sign here by the row so that when I drag this formula down with the fill handle, this reference doesn't want to come along with it. But these references will, and we want them to. So I can go ahead and enter that now. Now I can drag them down. There we go. So now I can put in whatever percentage I want. So let's see what's greater than negative 25%. Yeah, should be a lot of them. 0%, 15%, 20%, 30%. Oops. This is just a way to be able to change that condition to make this formula a little bit more dynamic. Another thing you want to look out for is so we have formulas in here. They're not, so we may not always have data. So we may not know our price change. So if I leave this empty, I'm going to get an error. Maybe we don't have the price change for this particular entry. We have an error. So one way to get around this is to use an if error in the formula. So I can leave my if statement in there. But before the if statement, I'm going to type if error. OK, so automatically my open parentheses showed up all the way at the end of this function I'm gonna put a comma and so I'm saying well the if error function you have a value and then the value if error so my value is our formula that we had earlier and then I'm gonna put after that value what I want to appear if there is an error so I just want I just want it to be blank, so I'll put two double quotes, closing parentheses. There we go. This should cure my error problem. All right, and it did. So that's really all I have for the if function, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.